Greetings Internet and welcome to Aaron Plays and I hope you're doing fantastically well. In this episode we're going to be continuing my playthrough of War and Peace, the Russian campaign, 1812 and this will be the French t November turn, not October, November. So technically turn seven in the game. And wow, has it been a bit of a roller coaster ride. The French got to within four hexes of Moscow and encountered some Russian entrenchments and attacked and failed. The Russians are now starting to push back. And that's the situation we are at, at the present moment. The game looks like it's heading for a draw, but you never know with the invariables of die rolls. Anything could happen. So let's go and have a look at the board. Remember, all the YouTube stuff, and uh, I'll see you down there. So let's start with a zoomed out perspective of the current situation. This is where the, the action has been. So there is still some action happening down here in Kiev. The Russians are besieging Kiev now. And uh, who, who's the French? I think it's Eugene. Yeah, the French commander Eugene. And uh, there was a standoff fight here, but the French are getting more and more depleted, but they are starting to fall back. But uh, yeah, the Russians have got to clear this map board of the French and French allies. And um, it's not impossible. There's only two turns, November and December, which are both winter turns. So let's go on with the game. And we start with the attrition phase. So how much does the wind have an effect? It adds an additional plus one. So looking at French and French satellite units will be minus one. Supply dependent, looks like most of the French units are in supply, but then there's a plus one for being in Spain or Russia and a plus one for during a winter turn. So the net is plus one on all French units. Let's see what the roll says. Got to see that. Two, they've been fortunate. Two, so net plus one is three. Okay, I'm going to start from this hex and move. Gradually westwards. So stacked with Napoleon is two, four, five guardsmen, and two, three, four cavalry. But nine. Nine with a net three. That's one loss. Oh, they take it on the guard or they take it on cavalry? I think that's a cavalry. Doesn't have to be, but. I value the, the guard infantry more. In this hex, nay, two, no attrition. This hex here, Jerome. He's just got cavalry, he's just got two, no. Commander B, big B, no, he's only got one. Commander A, he's got two, no. Poniatowski, now he's got a fair few. Infantry, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that will be one loss. These have just got troops coming up. That was Ponytelsky. Big A, just two. Two in here. Okay, so the city garrison, Eugene. He's got one, two, three, four, five. And the Darol's increased by the level of the siege number, which is one. So the roll was a four. No, it wasn't. It was a two, becomes a three because of the other modifiers, then becomes a four. That's still no, no additional losses. But as that siege in, increases, so it's siege one at the present moment, then that modifier will increase as well. Schwarzenberg, 
three so little b over here no not enough and the further we go back c just got one strength point the prussians not enough and d right at the back of it one two three four five again not enough so there's enough so it wasn't that many losses considering it's winter but then again the french stacks just ain't that big and then for the first time in this game we have an alliance roll okay so we've got various modifiers to this alliance roll it says the french player receives one city point for each major city on map board four which he controls which is three because it controls kiev smolensk minsk where are minsk is somewhere down here there it is so that's three and then you get points for battles which he's got two for which is five but there's minus two for the russian victories so we've got to make a roll. So there's a net minus three to this roll. Modded die roll is zero. Occurs during an alliance phase. The French player may immediately deploy before, uh, some Austrian reinforcements. They roll a three. Take away three is zero. They get one. And this is massive. One Austrian reinforcement. In Lublin. That's way over here. Yeah, he, 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 he's going to move by himself, isn't he? Swarzenberg. Yeah. Oops. All right. Great. Yippee. Uh, if the modified role is a seven, all Austrian Prussian forces desert and are immediately eliminated from the map. But Russians are going to win some, a lot more victories to, to incur that and take back some of those cities. Reinforcements phase. One Frenchman. There we go. He arrives in Dresden. And then one allied unit. We'll take a we're going to take well if it's polish you rise in warsaw so there's one polish in there at the present moment let's replace him with a two there we go when it is a is technically slightly closer to the front then after the reinforcement phase we're into movement go west young men I think we've got to try and relieve the siege of Kiev. We've got some troops in and around the area. But I think that'll be Mission Poniatowski and Schwarzenberg. Remembering it is winter, so force marching. Well, I get it. Yeah. It's a plus one modifier for the winter. But we know Eugene's got about five men. Let's see if we can switch the odds. Remembering that the um, Russians are still getting that morale boost. So one, two, three want to force march on hex the modifiers are they're not french guard french units foreign telsies aren't french they are all french ally no modifier they are supplied but they're in spain and russia plus one and it's winter plus two and you need a five or less with a plus two Roll a one, so they get down to 
here. Schwarzenberg, one, two, three. The cavalry, one, two, three, four. Let's put that to Schwarzenberg. Supply line, supply line. When he came on that path down, he has to leave a strength point in that hex because the Austrian maintained their own supply path. They can't go through the French supply depot. So there we go. It's an extra. Didn't say anything about Austrians and French stacking together. So there is a French supply path and Austrian. The Austrians are going from Lvov to this infantryman, to this infantryman, to Schwarzenberg. The French, mm. it's coming from Warsaw to Brest-Litovsk to this Italian unit to this Polish unit to Bavarians. So little b, he doesn't have any additional troops, so he's going to go back. One, two, three, four, five, six. Take command. The Warsaw Garrison. So that looks like the best the French can do down there. Okay. Now we know the Russians are starting to get something organized around here, but it doesn't feel like any direct threat. So I think it's time that the French start digging in. We have Ney and Smolensk. Ney has got only two troops. You need three to start building a fort, a, an entrenchment. And Sharon, he's got three cavalry. No, two cavalry. I think we need to take care of this Cossack that's encroaching. Commander Big B, he's got one pole. So we definitely have to hold on to Smolensk. Well, we don't, but uh, hmm, this is interesting. How far do we fall back? If we lose Smolensk, that's one city point less that the French have. But this army is now so depleted. Let's see how far some of these rear units get before we decide about the front. He's not moving. Force D. One, two, three, three. And we want him to go one hex further. Yours are six. He ain't moving any further. He's just got back to the Warsaw garrison. So you've got to start in the hex, so they're not moving. That's a little A. Eh? That's two. Two Denmark units. One, two, three. Force march of one. Rolls two. Yep, you can roll force march one. French cavalry one, two, three, four. Pay extra for crossing the river. Force march one. Rolls a one. Yeah, that's fine. Force C. That's just one, one and a limb One, two, three, Force march of one. Rolls of five. 
I think it was plus one of net, wasn't it? So no, as far as he goes. Commander A moves into Minsk. Okay, so that leaves. Let's just mark the supply trip path. What to do with the front, front three forces. I don't hit, the French do not need, I know it's to say I, because in, in this case it is I as I am blind the French, do not need to hold Smolensk. The Russians have got to take every city back. The French can't go for a win, Moscow's too far, they haven't got the strength. So holding Smolensk is, I wouldn't say it's pointless, but It might be worth just leaving a token force there that needs to be besieged or maybe assaulted. Let's see what the Russians do. But the rest of the French army is going to start pulling back. So one, two, stay on three. Now we're going to leave some extra troops for Ney. Ney is going to be the rear guard. Oh, so many guardsmen. We don't leave Gosman as a rear guard, do we? No. Alright, we've gone three to there so far. One a force march, one hex. Rolling a three. Just double check, that should be okay. They're French units, minus one. Spain and Russia plus one, plus one for winter, so net plus one, so it's a four, so they're okay, they can go one, the one hex. Okay, force B, one, two, leaves his one Polish unit with Ney, and then moves to the rear to get some of these other guys moving forward, that's two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Leaving Ney, the rear guard of Smolensk. Right, I believe that's the French movement done. So we have one attack, which is Jerome versus the Cossacks. Jerome has got two cavalry, so it's two to one. So it's not an overrun. Two to one. Modifiers. Jerome's one. French satellite, two. Two to one plus two. Eight, nine, ten. Which is enough to take out the Cossack, but it still costs the French. One of their quality cavalry units. They can advance in there. Look, a Polish cavalryman bites the dust. So yeah, I mean, well, the ideal result is a seven. Because then it'll be zero losses for the larger force and one for the French. Uh, I think it will work that way, unfortunately. Okay, so that concludes the French movement. Uh, I didn't do the Prussians, but they're not moving anyway. <laughs> uh, still got this to do down here. Okay. So they're going to give battle and the units inside the city are coming out. Oh 
Okay, so Eugene has one, two, three, four, five. Schwarzenberg, two, three. And Poniatowski, two, Let's just bring the camera up and you can see what's going on here. Now, as the, even though Schwarzenberg is technically the better leader, there's more French and French allies, so they're in command. Kutuzov has got five and two cavalry. So... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen to seven. That's two to one. Modifiers. Where me little dice? This is the first combat round. The little dice have gone for there they are. Okay. So French satellite forces is one and Polytowski or Eugene makes a measly two but the Russians are at three because it's inside their home country plus because of makes five so it's a French attack at two to one but minus three on the dice That's a three at two to one. Larger force takes one loss. There are seven Russians. So that is one allied loss. Uh, Portuguese have come a long way. And they die outside the gates of Kiev. Now what for the Russians to do? It's not all going to be two to one. And they, that minus three modifier, but they did get lucky. Hmm. I think they'll hang around for a second round. So it's now three to two with a minus three modifier. Oh, French aren't getting the rub here. That becomes a three again. And now it's a D1 on the larger force and a one. So it's again, there's still seven. So the Russians take the first loss. So that's two, three, four. But now the French are at D1. That would drop the morale to a net zero. So in actual fact, that now takes them down to just a one modifier. They could fight on, but now there's a chance of just guys just saying, yeah, we've we had enough. So they haven't managed to relieve the siege. Okay. I think Eugene can go back in the city and the other troops will remain back here to the... The Russians don't want to push because they do not really have the strength to do so. Or do they? Could they assault the city with a rail zero? I think I need to check some rules. Okay. This is quite convoluted, but Eugene falls back within the city. He can't leave with Schwarzenberg and his forces and Ponatowski. So it still leaves Eugene with five, but now D1 troops demoralised. 
Poniatowski takes his forces back. Very difficult. So he's got two, three, four, five, five strength, but they're demoralized one. Schwarzenberg takes his back and they're demoralized one. And the Russians, they could assault. If they do assault, the French, well, the French satellite forces morale increases by one. That D1 is removed. Or is it? No, it's not removed. It's just temporary. Their morale is now, if it's at zero, it goes to one. So there'll be, and then the forces, because they're inside the city walls, are double. So it's one, two, three, four, five. That's ten. And the Russians are assaulting with one, two, three, four, five, six. So the French will be rolling the dice at three to two. However, modifiers. Eugene's got a morale of one. And the troops have got a morale of one, so that's two. We can't find two on a little dice. There we go. Whereas the Russians will still be at three for their morale. So that's five. So it's three to two with a minus three again. Let's see what happens. Three to two with a minus three. French making the roll. Oh, they roll good though. Roll 10 becomes a seven on the three to two. That's one, one. One step loss each. It's a Bavarian that goes down. But their morale held. So now it would be three, four, five to one, two, three, four, eight. One to one. No, three to two. No, one to one. Yeah, one to one. I think the French, uh, the, the, the Russians will call off the assault. That will end the combat in that, that hex. And then we've got some die rolls for leaders to, to, to do. So we've got Eugene. He rolls a 10. We have Schwarzenberg. I haven't got white dice. Three. Pony, well, I have got white dice, but not with me. Pony and Telski. Ooh, close. And there was one up here as well, Jerome. He's fine. Then the Russian leaders. Or leader. We have Kutuzov. He's fine. And that's it. So the attempt to break the garrison out didn't work. Kutuzov is still there. Eugene has now only got four in the city. But then again, the Russians are only now besieging with five. But it's still enough to maintain the, the siege. So that ends the combat phase. I think that was all done correctly. So let's bring it back to the top. Well, that was by far the most complicated part of the combat. That's how sieges, withdrawing forces, battles, field battles interact. I had to read through that section again in between the, <laughs> the game and I think I got it right. If I didn't, please make a comment and let me know, because then I'll know for the next time I play the game. Yeah, the French are bugging out. They're potentially going to lose Smolensk and Kiev, but it's all cities in Russia that the, the Russians are going to take. So that's the November French turn. I will be doing the November Russian turns straight after this, uh, but I'll be dropping them on, on different days into the into my YouTube channel. I film a lot on particular days because when I'm at work, I get, I'm get i too bush to make a, a video recording. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'm still having fun. It still looks like it's going to be a draw, but 
who knows but until next time do all the youtube stuff play games have fun and enjoy what you're doing bye internet <laughs>